one of my favorite quotes actually because it sort of has to do with what happens when you get out of college or get out of a class. And it goes, education is what survives when what has been learned has been forgotten. All right, and so you might wonder, well, wait a second, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that as you get older and you get farther and farther away from college, you're gonna start to forget things. Okay, you're gonna forget what the syntax of C++ is and, and how to do a for loop in MATLAB, unless of course that's what you use in your job every day. But what really survives is the way that you learned how to think, okay? And so that's my sort of view here, especially with respect to Engine 101 and how it relates to people who are not gonna go into computer science, who are not gonna focus their careers on programming. And that's that in this class, we're teaching you how to think like an engineer. We're teaching you how to think algorithmically, to think computationally. We're not teaching you necessarily C++ syntax and how to run a compiler and how to debug your code. I mean, those are the things that come along the way, all right? But those are the things that are immediate. Those are the things that are important to the lectures now and the projects now. But what I want you to take away from this course in general is 10 years down the road when you're designing a new bridge or you're working on a new piston for an engine or something, I want you to remember how to think algorithmically, how to break up a complex problem into a series of tasks and work on each of those tasks individually. All right, so what you have to do then is you have to figure out which of these function fragments is going to create C properly. Now the code to create C, if we just give it some X values and Y values, is the same across all these examples here. So what you need to come up with is to figure out what are those X values. So talk to your friends and neighbors and see if you can figure out which one of those is the correct one. Again, questions, raise your hand please. Which is that? Like the range part. Oh, okay, so um, range one is the first value inside of the range input. So at the very top it says range is a vector with right. the values x min, x max, y min, y max. Okay. So range one is the x min value. Okay. And then range two is the is the x max value. Okay. All right, so for this one we got three answers. So one is left, two is right, and three is hands in the air. One, two, three, go. Two is right, which is right. Very good. So those x values and y values we use to feed into the mesh grid function, which we talked about last time. And that mesh grid function is then going to create those, that, that pair of uh, matrices, all right, that if you take corresponding locations in each of these two matrices, you get sort of a coordinate pair. And then we take that coordinate pair and we feed it into the calculation for the C matrix, which is the matrix of complex numbers. Right, and then that matrix of complex numbers is then fed into, it's kind of hard to see this, that matrix of complex numbers is then fed into the code for Mandelbrot Iterate. All right, so the code that we just created on the previous slide is up here in this big rectangle. And then the result of that is the C matrix, which is moving on. News flash for the day, all right. So this is a fun news flash. Has anybody heard about this? Oh yeah. So this is, a, this is something that came out of Google X's secret research lab. So Google has this, this building that's somewhere in the Bay Area where they do crazy and amazing research, like 10, 15 years out in the future type stuff, all right? Like edible circuit boards, you know, no, this is like this interesting, crazy stuff. This one though has an application that's, you know, fairly close to being implemented and it's called Project Glass, all right? So, Let's just go here to the YouTube clip for this. If you're interested in, in, in reading up on it, it's g.co slash project glass. G.co is Google's URL shortening service. But you, the YouTube video for this is pretty cool. 